<laughs> Fun fact, I don't think there was an SE to all switch in the shuttle. But Nerds. Bro. Bro. So, bro, guys, do you, even <laughs> do you even shuttle, bro? Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey. I'm Mike. Mike. And how's you are it going? currently live on Twitch TV. You are live on Twitch TV right now. How's it going? Are you going to join <laughs> us for a little while? I can join you guys for a little while. This is all Mike right, from the Intrepid Museum. Down. We've got one of the Intrepid staff members who's going to join us oh, here. We should have that other mic plugged in. We only have room for the three. That's interesting. Grab a chair off to the side? Uh, grab a chair in the middle somewhere right quick. Yeah, I want to um, go sound guy if that's cool. Yeah, okay, right, that's fine. Yeah, Let's go, go with that for now. Pop the headset on. Cool. And I wanna, I'll want i start yeah, by talking about some of the other shuttle designs here, and then we'll bring you back whatever we want to get. It's a totally a working museum, by the way. Yes. There's like people taking like TVs out and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> no, come over this way. We've got you over this way, man. Yeah, you're good to go. You're good to go. Go and pop that there on. you go. All right, good deal. So again, Mike, what do you do for the right. museum? I'm one of here. the senior tour guides here at the museum. Right there, you're oh, gonna need the headset. Yeah. Headset on. There we go. There we go. I should have waited. I'm a terrible host. Okay. You're one of the senior tour guides, tour guides at the yes. museum. Excellent. So do you focus on like one special and discreet this way? Some act like you like us. Mm. Uh, we shower come today. Come on over. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So do you focus on like one area of the museum? Do you go other places? What do you do? Like I go all over the place. My all over the place. My job is talking about the history of the ship, aircraft carrier. We talk about the space shuttle. I talk about the Hubble Space Telescope. Okay. Uh, Mostly right now, my job is to focus on the ship's history in Vietnam, okay. but I also do a lot of work with this baby over here. Excellent. Yeah. Um, EJ, how are his mic levels? He might need to be um, bumped up some. He seems like... Okay, good deal. Um, so, you kind of go all over the place. Do you, like, train other tour guides? Like, what sort of tour opportunities are available? I do train other guides. Right now, we're offering five different tours. So okay. We have our standard Intrepid 101 tour. Right. It's about an hour long. It goes through the hangar deck and flight deck, talks about the overview of aircraft carriers, what okay. they do, and a bit about the history of Intrepid. Cool. For those World War II buffs, we have a 100-minute guided tour that goes through hangar deck and flight deck, talking about the history of this ship in World War II. All right, sweet. Years ago. We also have our space shuttle tour, which is uh, Enterprise up close and in-depth. Right. It's a one-hour tour all about Space Shuttle Enterprise, the Space Shuttle program, how it got started, what's involved in getting a Space Shuttle up to space. Sweet. And then our last tour is a 60-minute tour all about Concorde, design, The Concorde, oh, yeah. that's right. Plane. Did you actually get to walk through the Concorde on that tour, right? Yes. Like, you get to go through the, con if you don't know, the Concorde's like the supersonic airliner that operated mm -hmm. for... 20 years or something like that. Well, a little bit longer, little yeah. Bit from longer 73 till about 2003. Mm -hmm. So 30 I, years. I can yeah. tell you, EJ wants to take that tour. I know <laughs> it. <laughs> Good deal. So you could actually help us out here because we were just sitting down with our game Kerbal Space Program and we were going to start building uh, a space shuttle in the game. Have you heard of Kerbal Space Program? You, you I know actually it is? have played it. I haven't played, You've played it since yeah. the what? past <laughs> couple of updates, but I have, uh, I have been playing with it. It's it's a fun tool. I know our education department here actually uses it as well. Wait, what? Yep, really? For kids. It's a great way to teach people about building rockets and balance and frankly, when there is the opportunity to fail spectacularly but <laughs> also to, <laughs> to achieve your goals, yep. that's where education happens. That's exactly. We kind of like fail our way to learning almost in Kerbal Space Program. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's not the way NASA wants to do it. It's right. It's, it's right. When you have that opportunity, it's perfect. It is. Yeah. Nice. So that's what we were going to kind of start doing here. And EJ, when you get a chance, could you scoot the camera over a little bit so we get Mike a little bit more in? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing my job here. I'm not looking as much into yeah. the Oh, it's okay. Right. No, it's we're just, having a conversation. Just it's hang out good. with us. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. Um, so one of the things that's actually back behind me, and I can't really zoom all the way into it, mm -hmm. um, but in this case right here, and I'm kind of pointing at the case that's right underneath the tail of the shuttle. Oh, there, right back over there, yeah. Um, there are actually some of the early designs of the space shuttle. Right? Uh, There's some mock-ups or like right ideas? back there, yes. Yeah, underneath the tail right there, There right? are some absolutely fantastic designs. Uh, one of my favorite topics. Yes, that's good. There EJ, we perfect. go. Perfect. Thank you. Is the lifting body program. Uh -huh. And it's not the best source, but uh, I love doing this. If you go to the Wikipedia page on lifting bodies, right? scroll all the way down to the mm -hmm. bottom at sources, okay. there is an autobiography in PDF format written by one of the NASA engineers that worked on the lifting body program and all the stuff happening out there at Dryden at Sweet. the time. It's a hilarious read. It's hilarious. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious because there are things that they're learning all the time even as they're engineering these, these lifting bodies, these okay. wingless flying vehicles. And that's taking it through uh, 
late 50s, early 60s, getting right, to the right. 1970s, by learning about lifting bodies and about creating a wingless flying vehicle, it helps them learn a lot more as well about the way we're going to land a space shuttle. Right. And when we're testing the, uh, I believe it's the X-24B, it's a very long Delta-like thing. Right, right. Uh, not really any wings. It actually has almost the same glide ratio as the space shuttle itself. So a brick. It's a brick. <laughs> Very it glides much like so. this. A falling brick. <laughs> but because that triangular brick, I guess right. let's call it, right. has the same glide ratio, they're able to pull the landing pattern for the lifting bodies and stick it right on the space shuttle and oh, learn a lot more about how to put cool. that down safely. We maybe will actually put together a lifting body sort of thing in KSP. Do you mind if we like look at that right quick? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's try let's one. see what we can do it's here. It's not going to be easy. You um, might have to play and put some of the wings inside the body well of the we've aircraft. got some new things now. Um, we've got actual pieces that have lift ratings. So some of the like Mark II pieces will actually have lift ratings on them. And I'm going to toss together just a little bit of an, like, like a concept that I've done before. Okay. But these Mark II pieces, they actually have lift. If you look at it, you can right-click on it, and you can see that it's got a lifting surface. A small one, yeah, so but that will work. So you get a little bit from it. So we're not going to build a huge craft here, but mm -hmm. I've, I've done this before. Let's just go with like a tester here. And where is my... We'll just go with a jet sort of deal. So we'll grab one of those things, then we'll grab one of these things here. And the lifting bodies, basically, that would be able to get some lift, but they still have like a little bit of, it's not wingage almost, it's kind of like for stability. They're fins, like it's, strikes it's almost. exactly for stability. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. is a design, it's one of my favorite lifting bodies, it accomplishes a lot, it's called the HL-10. Right. It's originally designed with two vertical fins okay. on either side. That's almost too big there, right? A uh, little bit, That's but we may have to big. fudge it. I can fudge it. I'm good at that. That's yeah. kind of like one of my core competencies is making stuff up. Um, when they began testing the HL-10 with these two fins, they right? realized it actually wasn't enough. It was very uh, poorly stable. So, so I mean, the fins were like what? The fins were like, you said they were vertical. They're not they like vertical, straight vertical? Or are they like they're vertical like, like that, but there was a third one added, and actually the... Uh, M2F3 also kind of looks like this. They added right. a third vertical fin okay. in the center. In the center, interesting. So is that like for for vertical stability or like what were exactly, they trying to do yeah. there? All right, uh, gotcha. You take a look at yeah. even the space shuttle itself. That vertical stabilizer. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's I not wish you could get up that high. Massive. Yeah, no, it's huge. Uh, and if you look on many of the aircraft we have out there, even something tiny like the A4 Skyhawk we yep. have down in our hangar deck, the vertical stabilizer is absolutely massive. Like, I know it's like a lot bigger than you expect on the F-16. It's yes. like you look at that thing and the plane's like kind of small because it's small for a fighter jet, right? Yeah, but then the, the, like the F-16 we have we have here, perfect example out there on the flight deck. Yeah. It, it's an early model. Uh, it's actually a Gulf War veteran. Okay. But when it comes to building a military aircraft like that, you want something that can be a flung around the skies. It's built to be relatively unstable. Right, right, and right. computers are going to help you. That lets it turn it. more quickly or maneuver more quickly when it's unstable. It wants to go basically any direction as, this, as opposed to like darting, right? Like exactly. you normally do. So on this thing that I'm putting together, um, are there control surfaces? There are control surfaces. Won't work without it. Okay. What sort of control? Like, are they all vertical? Are they horizontal? How do they go? Like... What we may want to try and do and, and fudge it, it a little up. bit here, I would recommend, let's take those uh, vertical stabilizers on the side, let's cant them outward. All right, good deal. A we can little totally do bit. That. There you and go. And then we can use control surfaces to give us both a little bit of right, pitch, pitch and, and yaw roll. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we can use the third stabilizer right there in the center to work on yaw itself. Gotcha. Uh huh. All right, so there we go. And then we'll put that on like that, and just one asymmetry. So then we've got our yaw control up there, and then we've got these, which I'll rotate so that they match. Mm -hmm. Have you played one of the new build editor tools in KSP? I don't think so, no. Oh my gosh, the build editor. So we're playing mostly stock, by the way. We don't have any part right. mods or anything. Mm -hmm. I've um, seen your channel. I've seen a couple of uh, really? mods there you go. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Intrepid Watches Kerbal Space Academy. The Intrepid Watches Kerbal Space Academy. I love it. I do my research. You I'm do your yeah. research. All right. Um, so we've got these new tools where we can actually... And this is... When do these come out? Um, not point nine zero. EJ, when did the editors come out? Uh, I don't even remember. I've... I've, they've been out for so long, 2.5? Two 2.5? Five? Two five? Okay, they've then I might have so played long. with them a little bit. It's been yeah. a couple of months since I booted up Kerbal. So we've got this sort of thing going on. Um, let's check some of our stuff. That's actually not terrible. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. The center of lift is a little bit 
further behind than you would want, but we haven't put an engine on the back yet. That's true. Uh, if this is going to be a true lifting body, we might want to stay away from something that's going to be a turbojet okay. and give it a rocket. A give lot it of a these rocket. Oh, oh, you just want it to be a rocket. All right. Twist our arm, right? Um, so well, I'm going to have to replace this piece then because that is the f liquid fuel fuselage. We may be able to make it work. I think yeah, I just want to let's fuel. bring See. more rocket fuel. Oh, that'll be perfect. Because then. why not? It's rocket exactly. fuel. Exactly. As we got plenty of it. Yeah. Let's see if we can grab that as well. That's a probe core. That we perfect. Can use that'll help us thing. stabilize it. And That's a new thing. Fly it. Then these I hope I don't have to redo. Yes, thank you, KSP. I appreciate you. <laughs> there let's we go. See here. Yeah, they're saying point nine oh in chat. Point nine oh, okay. So they're saying point nine oh is when we got this. I've I've like I've started to take them for granted. I just looked where my camera's supposed to be at home. <laughs> like completely from reflex. I don't know if y'all saw me look off to the side, but I looked in the completely wrong location because that's where my home camera is. Yeah, which okay. I think EJ tweeted out a picture of our setup. You can see what we've got. Here oh, nice, nice, will nice. In just nice. a second, but <laughs> oh my gosh! So you want me to put a rocket on it, like a straight up? Yes. Now like I don't know if we're going to be able to get the power we'd need out of something that would look lifting body like. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're not going to have a lot of fuel here either. Yeah. That's the dual mode engine. That might work. I've used That's those before. That's the jet engine slash rocket engine. Uh, That's but I don't know if it's going to have enough power to actually get off the ground on yeah. its own. This is going to rock uh, 1.15 thrust to weight on the pad, but that's in jet engine mode. If we click it over to, let's see here, switch the mode over to close cycle, it'll rock a 2, no, 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 that's the wrong one. Basically a 2.0 thrust to weight. That might work. Let's test it. Yeah. Let's just see if it blows up. Yeah. If it blows up, it blows up. By the way, yes, that's we... What Kerbal's for. That's exactly what Kerbal's by the, yeah. for. By the way, for case, chat. we don't have to risk Jeb. Yeah. Sorry, I keep for interrupting chat. you there. No, we uh, we are aware that the mouse is not lining up. It's an OBS issue. And Wait, what? Uh, well, now we're aware. Yeah, the mouse apparently is... Yeah, the mouse is different on OBS than it is on the screen. I've uh, never seen that before in my life. So, yes, we are aware of that now. What? How does so, that work? Apologies. That's all right. Uh, apparently, that's a thing. So... EJ's working on tweeting that out right now. Don't worry, guys. We'll... Uh, I have... I've EJ never seen that, that before. I have no clue what the deal with that is. Wow. So, yeah, that's a thing. It's like, it's like OBS thinks the window's smaller than it actually is. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we at any wheels on this? I don't know. Oh, nah. I was just going <laughs> to launch it from a rail system. <laughs> that <laughs> might be better. Do Let's we, uh, keep looking here. What's the center of gravity looking like here? Right there. It's not right bad. Uh, we can it's move the lift. It might fall back on itself, but that's what experimentation is <laughs> That's <for>. what experimentation is <laughs> for. What sort of nose cone should we put on it? We could put an air intake, maybe. That might be helpful if we're using mode. the dual engine. Um, just Get to make it look awesome. Something like that, yeah. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. And then it's we'll slap look like the, an X-21. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Should I just put it on a, you know, let's start like this. Let's just slap it on a launch clamp and see if it works. Will it need a battery? Uh, probably not for a short flight. I don't expect okay. it to last for very long, honestly. <laughs> That's true. Um. <laughs> We're not going to have much lift out of this. We'll have to see what we can do. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, right? well, I can tell you, <laughs> yeah. it could blow up. <laughs> That's probably what's going to go wrong. <laughs> Where's the root node? We might All right, there we go. Start the engine and then release. Yeah, it. Yeah, and then release it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let it like spool up, sort of thing. And we'll start it in uh, rocket mode as well. Okay, this keyboard needs to move over. Just Have slightly. You, uh, you know, you get so used to like using your regular keyboard, and then you like move to a different keyboard, and it's like, what? I can never do this. This is never going to uh, work. Oh no! Here at work, we have the computer all set all the way. Uh, off to the side, it keyboards looks over good. here, I can't yeah. do it. That looks legit. That should help. It's so going to rip yeah. their wings off. It's going to rip the wings off. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, lifting body like that. And let's see if this thing works. And we're, we're not going to spend four hours just trying to make this one thing oh, work. Oh, no. We'll Definitely. Because <laughs> I do want to get into the shuttle. I want to get into the shuttle. All right, KSP, that's good. Wait, I'm right on the top. I don't understand it. I don't, I, I don't know yeah, what it is. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. weird. Why the mouse is messed up? Yeah, the mess is definitely the mouse is definitely messed up. So let's see what we've got here. Um, let me change the staging so we don't just drop it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I'll throttle it all the way up. I'll make sure I can see my resource panel. I'll engage the SAS. We'll try it. Let's try it in air breathing mode first, maybe. That's, and I love this is new as well. This is stock. These ground effects. If you've got That's an engine good. pointing yeah. at the ground, and this it's, it especially comes into play when you're landing on the moon or something, mm -hmm. you can actually see the dust being blown now. That's perfect. Yep. So that was new in 1.0. That was kind of like a surprise feature that came out. All right, we've um, got SAS on. That'll help us. This is never going to work. We're only making 94 kilonewtons of thrust. Uh, let's do it anyways. Whee! That was close. We got some lifts. 
little bit of lift. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just got some physics shenanigans there. That didn't work at all. What if um, we had a bit more thrust with let's us? Let's try that again. Yeah, yeah let's go to the I other. <laughs> just add some of those disposable. <laughs> Put SRBs on it. Yeah. <laughs> Put SRBs on it. Let me see if I can try it with the uh, engine in rocket mode, and we'll see if it doesn't just <laughs> fall over. Let's <laughs> see if that'll work, definitely. So I should be able to go there. In the rocket doesn't actually spool up, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to uh, light it before we do the launch clamps. But That's I'll do true. it anyways. Yeah. That's jet mode. There That's rocket the mode. Yeah. That's there, better there already. We go. There we go. Now it's almost like I think we're just like flying. So this is new in 1.0 as well. We can actually see the aerodynamic forces. Oh, perfect. So we can see where we're getting lift from. And you can see these three Mark II parts in the middle are all going to be generating lift for us. And there's our control surfaces. When I do the control surfaces, you can see it pushing it around. Uh, how's the yaw? Uh, is it very effective? Whoa! Oh. OK, that's actually that's normal for a lifting it body. It wanted to roll. Really? That's normal? That's normal. Uh, it's something that they definitely had to counteract. OK, this is terrible. I have no control of this craft anymore. I have no roll control, apparently. That doesn't make any sense. Hey, slow down. Did we set the controls for roll? Uh, d d d d d Chat, was that loud? Might tell have us, been. Tell us if the game was too loud. Tell us if the <laughs> game was too loud there. Um, let's try this again. Back to there. Back to the launch. So is that normal? That's normal. We have a very tiny craft. Right. We have control surfaces at the extreme end. It's going to cause. Right. I'm um, not sure if this is the right term, but at the adverse yaw when you roll. Just like or unintended or motion. We, we don't want it to be doing that, right? Right. Now, so one other thing we can do, and this was done on lifting bodies, is okay. add another control surface, almost like a spoiler, that can oh, help with that control. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Because that's like, uh, the shuttle doesn't actually have a tail like that. It doesn't have a spoiler. It does not. The yeah, elevators are on the wing. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have ailerons outboard, elevators inboard, and the rudder itself works as a rudder, and it actually pops open like that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Speed yeah, it's the speed brake on the tail, yeah. I keep just crashing this thing over and over again. I don't know. I just I had reprogrammed the control surfaces, so that's another thing we can do. We can right click mm -hmm. on a control surface and say, "Hey, we don't want to use you for pitch, right? Or That'll yaw. We help. can like turn it off." Mm -hmm. In this one, we can say we don't want to use it for yaw. Right. And let's just see if it controls better this way. I'm just gonna switch the mode. What mode is that in? Close cycle. Good. Let's throttle it all the way up, and let's panel lock it. Say this is engaged. We're just gonna reload the space. All right. So let's see if this works. Get a bit more speed. That could help. Okay. Oh, and another thing we've got, um, whoa, -oh. there we go. It's a little back heavy, so it's it should be able yeah. to... Half, it's a Mach 0.5, that's fine. And I can yaw, but then there's me rolling as I yaw as well. Right. Yeah. All right. Now, if deal. you had a stick in the cockpit, you would be able to correct that. To as correct for it, back. yeah, 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 because this is like the analog, just pressing the keys. And look at that, it wants to roll no matter what. Let's see what it's doing. Oh, now it's, it's getting to where it doesn't want to be controlled anymore. We like may be moving too fast for those tiny control surfaces. We've just about yeah. broken the sound barrier there. I don't know. You can see we're Mach 0 0.90. And it is just not stable is all. So when you build something that's not an actual plane, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't look like it's flying all weirdly. Um, when you build something that's not an actual plane, you have all sorts of, like, problems, I guess, with stability. Yeah. So the shuttle is almost a good design of something that's got some features of a plane but also got some features of the lifting bodies and the thing that's kind of like... Yeah. If you look at some ah! of the early lifting bodies, you look at the ah. HL-10 itself and then look right. at the wing design of the shuttle, right. that airfoil is very similar to what you would find on one of those lifting bodies. I gotcha. It's, it's big. It's a massive airfoil, which is strange when you think about something that's going to be re-entering the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of drag in the way. Yeah. And one of the reasons why we need so much of the heat shield. Gotcha. And you want a lot of drag sometimes. Do you um, want a lot of drag on the shuttle? Does that help it slow down more? Well, or no? Massive wings are certainly going to be a big help as you're coming through. That's going to give us right. a lot of lift at low speed. For a glider, right. that's quite useful. Okay. The space shuttle is one of the fastest safely landing objects <laughs> on planet Earth. <laughs> the fastest safely landing uh, We can always object. crash faster, but it's obviously good if the people inside are kept safe. Whoa! I don't know what just happened there. Uh, we're at higher altitude, right? Uh, yeah, we're up to 11. 11,000 Also, meters. we're empty of fuel. That's true. Yeah. That's I bet you our center it. of mass is moved around. We're unbalanced because yeah. center of mass is a little further aft. And now we're trying to lawn dart kind of backwards here. There, there we go. Because in terms of the shuttle, it comes in, you know, at like orbital speeds of 17,500. It lands at about 230 miles an hour or so, Something right? Something like that, yeah. yeah so from so. orbital speed to 230 miles an hour. And that's an absolutely massive deceleration. 
Mm -hmm. Let's see right. if I can't. And that's a lot faster than a commercial airplane, too, right? Much faster. Yeah. You're not going to find much more commercial aircraft. Uh, anything coming down to JFK is not going much faster than 150. 200. Something yeah, like yeah, yeah. Coming, uh, a, a lot slower. It just it really doesn't want to roll. Like it's so hard to roll. Mm -hmm. The shuttle has the big. Uh, you can actually see it on the screen. Like right here above my head, it's got the big uh, elevons. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're called? What are they actually called? Uh, if they're doing the same job, right? Then they're elevons. Okay. Yes. If we have them separate, and we do on the shuttle, the right. outboard is the ailerons, the inboard is the elevator. Okay. Then they would be separate. Oh. But okay. you've got all sorts of these controls, and the engineers just kind of smush the terms together. So if you have um, hmm. Let's say it's an elevator, but it doesn't have the horizontal stabilizer like this. It right. Just moves like this. You got a stabilator. A stabilator. Yeah, stabilator. They just like <laughs> mash the terms together like however yeah, they want. Well, Whichever works. Do. So it doesn't. Uh, that's actually interesting. I, d I didn't know that. I'm just letting this fall out of the sky. That's it's not fine. controllable. There's <laughs> nobody in it. Because we're gonna learn from this by failing. Mm -hmm. Um. So even just because it's on the wing doesn't mean that it's not an elevator. Correct. It's more how you have it programmed. Mm -hmm. If it's just designed to do the pitch of the craft, it could be an elevator even though it's on a wing like the space shuttle. It can. Kind um, of. You also have other control surfaces. Um, just trying to think of real-world examples here. Right. Uh, on a Russian fighter jet. It's actually the navalized version we've of got some the of those SU-27. Right. Um, so we've got a MiG-17 and a MiG-21 MiG over there. Those I was going for Russian fighter jets. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fighter we've jet. got Russian fighter jets outside. Uh, the Su-33 right. has canards. Out okay. in front by yeah, the yeah, nose. Yeah. And canards. those canards, uh, which we do have in Kerbal. Okay, yeah, yeah we do. Uh, actually help with roll and they help with pitch. Right, right, right. Okay. Good. We probably need canards on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> we need it to be less terrible. Mm -hmm. So I guess the rule is I was going to try to glide it over there, but I. Yeah, I don't know it's if it's going to work. Helping we may want to add something at the front to give it more of a center of gravity yeah. towards its center of mass. It's just. It's just falling mm. out of the sky. Because now the, the center of lift or the center, I guess, pressure really here is behind the center of mass, so it's lawn darting kind of this way down. Yeah. Yeah. Not looking great. Because even when the shuttle lands, it has no fuel in it pretty much. So. No. No. So All that fuel is expended getting it back down yeah, into yeah. the atmosphere. I'm just going to let it. Just cover your ears. Thing, cover your ears. Oh, no. Chris Douche. I'm fully aware that pushing my headphones onto my head just makes it louder. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, what kind of brakes does the shuttle have? It's got like Brembo's on it or something? Uh, the brakes themselves, <laughs> wheel brakes, there is a drogue parachute. Okay, right. Uh, which is going to help quite a bit when you're landing that fast. Okay. Uh, speed brake up at the top there. But as far as I'm aware, the, the brakes aren't going to be all that much more different than what you would find on something more modern. Okay. Uh, yeah. Landing on the runway. Okay. Yeah, you can still brake them pretty hard. And I know a few astronauts who have uh, accidentally lit the tires on fire because they were braking too hard, but... That can happen. It yeah. can happen even if you're not <laughs> in a space shuttle. That, that too, yeah. Uh, when I've been doing, uh, this was years and years ago, and yeah. I was doing my own flight training. Cool. Uh, the little dinky airplane I was flying landed at 55 knots. And okay. And if you weren't careful, you could still get those tires really hot. Really? Just from braking too much? Yep. Whew. I've never actually thought of that. Wow. I could do that in a car, in like a car scene sort of deal, but... So I've renamed this lifting body that doesn't work. That's um, right. <laughs> it does lift, but then it's uncontrollable whenever it's done lifting. Mm -hmm. I want to move on from this, and I wanted to look at another thing that's in the case over there, because okay. there's like some of the original shuttle concepts. Mm -hmm. And so we all know in Kerbal Space Room, it's kind of hard to make a space shuttle because of the way it's on the back of the boosters in the tank. Right. It's asymmetrical, mm -hmm. right? And in Kerbal Space Program, because you have to balance the center of thrust through the center of mass, center of mass changes, yada, yada, yada. It's hard to design that. You don't mm -hmm. just slap it on there and it just flies. You start to do flips. Mm -hmm. Some of the original shuttle concepts. Look at there this. Thank you, EJ. Look at this there. guy. Oh, my gosh. Save. I wonder if I could like hold this. Okay, that's amazing. I don't know if they're going to be able to see this. Let me go full screen right now. EJ just held up the shuttle repair manual. Did you see we have the uh, Haynes manual? I did. For the shuttle We've got repair. a couple of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring resource. this up and see if it comes up. And somebody could get a, maybe a link in chat to the same sort of thing here. There. Right, EJ's, EJ's going to link it. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. Right? There's all sorts of different designs in there um, that some of them, I'm going to look underneath it. EJ, I'll get a link so you can see it more up close. Some of them uh, have it on the back asymmetrically. Sometimes the boosters actually have wings of their own. <laughs> right. It looks like. And then I don't even know what's going on there. I mean, yeah. what Which is that? one over here? I don't know. The one in the middle. Here, you can hold it. The middle. There you go. One in the I'm middle. I'm driving. not sure what this one in the that middle. That one's weird. Like the other two here, they boosters. look like they would not necessarily be launched. Uh, 
vertically but right. horizontally, and then you'd have the situation where you get to a certain altitude, yeah. you release and it, you and release it, kind of like Spaceship Sorry, One you sort of deal. No, that's, no, that's okay. Cool. We're all friends there. Yeah. yeah. So I, I kind of wanted to look at that right quick, um, mm -hmm. and I almost wonder why we didn't go with the design where the shuttle kind of sits on top of a stack instead of on the back now. of the stack. It's what we're doing now with uh, a lot of the tests for, of course, capsules being right? used now uh, and designs for future shuttles, even though I don't think we're going to see one for ages. Right. Um, the, the design is really, let, let's get something on the top of that rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the center of mass is easier it's to find. Easier it's easier to deal yeah. with, right? So I want to see if I can throw something together like that right quick. And I'm going to use the Mark II cockpit. We're kind of working our way up from like a little simple sort of lifting body where we learn some basics Definitely. of things that don't control and crash. I can say yeah. I've never been able to successfully use that Mark III cockpit. Oh, really? Yeah. We're oh, going wow. to be doing that. The we're entire purpose of the stream today is to get a shuttle going so that tomorrow we can launch a Hubble. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have uh, Mike Massimino on the stream. Perfect. So that he can talk about repairing the shuttle. So that's what we're doing today is trying to set up for the stream tomorrow. So it's okay. not like... Here, Mike, so here's our shuttle, building. and it's like falling out of the sky mm -hmm. or something. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of a cargo bay on here, and I'm going to see how quickly I can do this, because we really do want to get over to the shuttle. That's just, that's kind of a tiny cargo bay, honestly. Mm -hmm. We'll do there kind of go. the same form factor. Mm -hmm. We'll put uh, some fuel on there. In chat, I do appreciate y'all. Thank you for hanging out. I know that we're not reading chat as much as we normally do. Yep, so We've yeah. got limited time, and we'll have like periods where we go through. Um, yeah, and I know EJ's over there questions. answering questions EJ's too. EJ's answering so. questions. I wish we could get a microphone on EJ so EJ could talk as well. Um, we have the other mic, but I don't know if that one's plugged. No, no we got the uh, the other microphone oh, we, we were do using have yesterday. The other, we do. Do we EJ, have an XLR? If you want to plug that in. EJ, you know the handheld mic we were using yesterday? It's yes, right down there. Yes, that you can get on too. <laughs> EJ's yeah. going to like GI crawl. crawl underneath. Yeah, there you go. If only there. EJ is right underneath the screen right now crawling to get a microphone. Nice. All right, so let's see here. Um... I think I'm going to put a little bit more fuel in here. And just so you know, you're in full screen mode still. I am in full screen. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Everyone, I appreciate yeah. that. All right, Let's thank go you, over there. there we go. Yeah, Dust has a countryman. That's extra. I do have a different microphone. Um, we were running out of plugs to get all of our Astro Gaming headsets working. There we so go. that's that. And we'll slap... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put these big wings on it. Is there something to do with... Like, can you have too much wing? That looks <laughs> ridiculous. That's a lot, but we may also may be ha uh, having to work within the engine to get things working. Yeah. Uh, the more wing you have, the more drag you're going to have, which also means it's going to be more difficult to get it up there. Right, right. I've uh, Maybe we could do something with this. I don't know. We might want to try something similar to Concord Slender Delta, where it starts oh, off that's a good idea. at an angle and, and just gets wider. Look, maybe we could do something like that. That might sort of work deal. Better. It doesn't look great there. Mm -hmm. So and that's I'd similar to what we have on the shuttle as well. You're right. It is. That is a little bit of a Concorde sort of esque setup. Now some of the parts now actually hold fuel, Perfect. so, so I can, can look put at some. Fuel in the yeah, wings. yeah, yeah. Now I'm limited to liquid fuel, so they're more jet engines. I mean, have you mm -hmm. seen, dude? We've got like actual jet. This is stock. <laughs> we've got like airliner. Wings I haven't now. seen that. No. no, it's ridiculous. We've got uh, like engine nacelles and new intakes. What I is remember that? the uh, wings like that from mods. I don't remember those being stock. So that's yeah. fantastic. Make it, just make it smaller. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. All right, good deal. Crop it down to the worm. Maybe. Go over there. Da -da -da -da. Edit scene. We are learning all sorts of things from the stream, guys. And I think in the future we'll have two computers um, where one guy can be running the production and cleaning up stuff. Right now it's just one computer that we got going on. Um. So that doesn't honestly look too terrible. I don't know about the engines in the back like that. But if we're going to want to stack mount this on top, we need like a hard point in the back to mount to. So this something isn't a great, like, like putting the engines in the back like that isn't a great design. We may need to do something like this um, so that we have something that we can stack mount it to. Uh, so let's do that. And I'm just totally making stuff up here. Then I'll get some of the uh, engine cells. And this isn't based on anything real. We're just kind of like trying to see if we can't put one on top of the stack and see if that fares differently. Where are the fuel nacelles, or the engine nacelles? There we go. Yes, just throw it instantly away, yeah. that's fantastic. And I should be able to get those in there like oh. that, and we'll see if we can't get engines on there somehow. Now, is there a reason um, maybe that we wouldn't want to do this? Like having the engines outboard as opposed to in line? I don't see any other way we could do outboard it if we stack on it. More drag? There's going to be more drag. Uh, drag itself is going to be a problem. Right. Uh, one of the better reasons for having engines inboard is simply because it makes maintenance easier. Really? Uh, everything is, is right oh. there. Oh, interesting. I've never thought of that. That actually makes a lot of sense. So, hmm. What sort of engines should we put on it? 
Straight rocket engines? Like a rocket engine is probably going to be the most helpful. It means okay. we'll need to find somewhere else to put oxidizer. But So we're not trying to make a space plane here. Um, we are just making a rocket plane, basically, or some sort of shuttle that will lift Very up. Very much and so. Then I mean, I don't know if it's going to get to uh, to orbit. Not with what we have. Probably we not. We need to have no. a lot more fuel. But well, we're we going to put a big stack underneath it. Yeah, we're going to put a big stack underneath it. Let's get rid of that because we don't ever need just the liquid fuel. Let's slap this on, and we'll see where is the wing strike sort of deal. There's the wing strike that doesn't have fuel. That's kind of the one that matches this form factor, right? Right. Yeah. And we'll slap some intakes on it right quick. I use the word slap a lot, and then it takes me four hours to do anything. Um, there we go. I don't I know, know if that makes sense. The parts sense. are snapping better. Yeah, no, it's, it's easy. To. You can actually hold down Alt, and it'll make it so it just attaches to one of the green nodes. The, the axial, or sorry, yeah, the axial attachment points. Mm -hmm. um, why do we need intakes, though? It's a rocket plane. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> they look cool, they but might. we don't actually We might need just them. want to put caps on those. For yeah, the yeah, yeah. So we've got some new caps as well. We could do something like that. Oh, that's perfect. And I think there's fuel in here, which we don't need the liquid fuel on. Mm. Um, but we are going to need fuel lines to bring this stuff out. That's so that's a, maybe another reason to, uh, I guess, in Kerbal Space Program, mm -hmm. <laughs> not have to run external fuel lines. Where are my fuel lines? Right on there right. we go. I don't know if those are causing drag yet in the, in the game, but they would definitely cause they drag. They do. In 1.0, they, they cause drag, but they add mm -hmm. it to the parent part. So you won't mm -hmm. see a drag line from them, okay. but they do actually cause a little bit of drag. Um, that's actually not bad. How much delta V do we have in this? That's 1387 delta V with insane thrust to weight. Is that all correct? Is that an atmosphere? No, that's non-atmospheric. That's not terrible, but there's no payload in there right quick. Um... What should we put in as a payload? Just uh, something like this. And we'll just lock down the fuel tank and we'll, we'll pretend that it's got some satellite that weighs, come on, mm -hmm. however much that weighs. What is there that tank? Go. That tank weighs 2.25 tons. So the payload that we're it's working with bad. is 2.25 mm -hmm. tons. We'll just play around. Um, then underneath this, we would actually mount this on top of a stack. Let's see if it's going to glide very well first. That should work well. It's pretty close. Center of mass is center close. of lift. Um, if we take out the payload and take out the fuel, I wonder how it's going to look. That's Still not, not that bad. terrible. No, not yeah. Pretty good. Let's bring this, because this is going to move it way forward. Mm -hmm. But then we still have the payload in there. So let's take, let's not worry about the dry weight of the tank there. Mm -hmm. That should actually glide pretty well. I think so. Uh, we don't have control surfaces. And so we'll need a vertical stabilizer And a vertical well. stabilizer, yeah. yeah. So let's just make sure that this thing is glide worthy. And again, um, since we're limited for time, we're actually, instead of like launching it and then failing it and then launching it again and failing it and launching mm -hmm. it and failing it, we're going to try for, su for some success here. In the beginning. Yeah, by just no, kind of doing things that we know. Um, maybe good ideas. Let's see. If this we have something bigger outboard that can help us el uh, be an Elevon, it'll Yeah, be and I got Elevon's some of our, elevated. these are some of the best control surfaces we get. Perfect. Um, they look mm -hmm. a little bit weird, but I think it's okay. As long as they work, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. I think oh, that's Kerbal okay. Fashion Academy, right? It's Kerbal Fat. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Kerbal Fashion Academy. Um, that looks okay. We'll All just right. go with it. And we need some sort of vertical stabilizer. Is there a, a massive vertical stabilizer? There's the, <laughs> the shuttle last one. Right? Yeah. Is it careful what you wish for? Oh, for yeah. For surely it shall come to pass. Look, right here. Where is the. Right up top <laughs> there. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's a little bit. You asked for a massive vertical stabilizer. Look and familiar? <laughs> Look familiar to anything behind you? You shall get a yeah, massive right vertical there. stabilizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looks ridiculous. Let's not do this. Um, <laughs> so we just want a big vertical <laughs> stabilizer. One of the standard deltas might work. We've got a, uh, let's see here. Where is the control surface? The winglet? It's not very big, honestly. Oh, it's also backwards. Yes. Too small? You want bigger? I've I got mean, a bigger you one. You might even be able to add... Two. That might be too big for this design and add too much weight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit. That's not looking great either. Um, it's yeah, there you go. Yes. Now we're right. talking. Shark Week Although type. canted forward <laughs> is interesting. So what about two, two maybe? Two would work just fine there, I think. Like that? Yeah. It looks a little small. They are a little small, yeah. but Kerbal seems to work that way. Yeah. I mean, the last thing that I could do is grab, like, uh, because we were just talking about the importance of the, the kind of almost oversized looking. Look at that. Hey, oh, wait a there second. We go. That will be perfect. That's not bad. That should work. No, that what is the heat there. tolerance? That may be an airplane part. Uh, where did I just get it from? No, the heat tolerance is 2400. So we've got, mm -hmm. we've got shock heating now. 
Perfect. And you can actually blow pieces off of your space plane or rocket mm -hmm. or glider or whatever as you re-enter. And the, the good uh, part about that is as the shuttle re-enters, the heat shouldn't be getting up there. It should be staying mostly on the underside. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the Kerbal Space Program, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the heat goes everywhere. What you do you think about this instead? You could also mount it a little further forward. It looks a little bit like a Blackbird, actually, someone said. It does kind of look like a Blackbird. Which, You're by right. the way, there is one on the Intrepid. There yes, is sir. an A-12, right? The there second one ever made. The second one ever made? Mm -hmm. Spent most of its life hanging on a boom, having radar shot at it for right, different right, directions. Right. But it does have about 66 flight hours. Not that many. If we have time, I've got to show. We built one in KSP. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's one of the first things we did because we got some new engine effects. What do you think about that design? It's okay. worth a shot. Yeah, you don't, you're not liking it. You're not liking it. Why would we want it like, maybe not on the nacelles and, and on the... I'm just thinking really about nacelles. extra drag, but frankly, I... I'm willing to give it a shot. I think okay. this will work. All right. Let's put our fuel back in it. That's our payload that will lock down mm -hmm. so that we don't actually get to use it. Then here's some of our fuel. And here's some of our fuel. Da -da 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 -da. There you go. All right. So that's 1,000 delta V. And really what we need from there is, is to finalize our orbit and then to deorbit and glide back home sort right. of deal, right? Because mm -hmm. um, that's what the space shuttle uses. The so what are they called? The OMS? Oh. Uh, what, the engines it used to fire itself down? Yeah, the, the, the orbital maneuvering system like engines. Yep. Oh, mess. Gotcha. It finalizes its orbit with that, and then it like brings itself back down as well. Yeah. Once it's in orbit, because it launches with the giant orange tank and the two yeah, solid rocket yeah, yeah. boosters. The orange tank feeds the main engines that you see on the back of the shuttle, which But there's no here fuel for the main engines on the Correct. shuttle itself. The, fuel has, the shuttle right, has right. no fuel storage for the liquid hydrogen and oxygen. That's the all big, that orange the tank. The three big engines. Now, yeah. the interesting thing there, and what we may be wanting to aim for here, Okay. that's our design, right? We have the big engines in the back. Right. There's another space shuttle. It's mm -hmm. called Buran. Okay, yeah, Russian yeah, yeah. Shuttle. The Russians have the advantage of we, we did it first, so they right? can look at it and see what works <laughs> They're like, hey. Work. They took all of those engines that are going to get the thing into orbit or right? into space, and they put them on the rocket package. Uh -huh. Why carry that dead weight? Because oh. yeah, the engines are used for exactly 1% of the shuttle's flight time, so... You know, why? otherwise 99% of the time they're doing nothing. That was a serviceability thing? They wanted to recover them and use them over and over again? Was that why they put them in the shuttle like that, to bring them home each time, or, or what? Off the top of my head, you know, frankly, I'm not sure. If you put the there? engines there, you're definitely going to have them again. You'll yeah. be able to service But you got to tote them around with you the entire time, right? right. Yeah. Okay. Is that totally wrong? You could just say if I'm uh, totally wrong. I don't wrong. know exactly the reason why they... <laughs> I mean, yes, reasonability like, is part of it. You're totally it wrong. It could be just for the, where the thrust was coming from. It could be a bunch of different reasons. I don't know exactly why NASA did that, but... Huh. Uh, I just, I never really looked into it, and I just assumed that they did that because, uh, like, a serviceability, like, you recover them that way, they're mm -hmm. protected inside the shuttle, you can redo them. Nope. But then again, I guess it does take a lot of time to service the engines. Which it does. It yeah. was never I I uh, intended for it to take that long. Yeah, it yeah. Right, they're figuring up doing 50 so. flights a year, not four. But right. Yeah. yeah. So let's see, I'm just, I'm putting important things like landing gear. Landing right gear is oh, important. Oh, yeah, that. Ah, da, 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 there we go. And then I'll try to do a little bit of an angle of attack. That's... It's a little low pro, but, you know, something. If we rip the rear engine off, maybe we don't need that. And, uh, you know something? I'm, I'm a little weird playing on this different keyboard. Like, I keep... Mm -hmm. Y'all have seen yeah. me build things before, and I, like, the keyboard sizes, the key sizes are different. And I'm having trouble, yeah, like, you know? No, I know what you pressing mean. Pressing the keys in the right spot? I would actually recommend... That nose wheel, uh -huh. don't pick it up inside the body of the airplane too much. Leave it like this. Leave it a little bit like that. Okay. Because if we look at the way it's slanted now, right. the angle of attack on takeoff right. is slightly increased. That's going to give right. you more lift. But I'm going to stack this on the top of a big rocket. You're right. You're right. That's if we were true. building it a space plane, the that's yeah. exactly right. We want some angle of attack. For when landing, we're going down anyway, runway. that's going to be very helpful. This keeps the nose from, I guess, slamming down as much, exactly. I guess, right? If we can land at kind of that angle with all the wheels touching down at once, as opposed to landing and poof, slamming the nose down. And this way, it should touch down much more comfortably. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. to worry as much about right. coming in too hard. Sweet. So I guess one thing with this design, we're not going to use these engines at first, maybe. We're just going to use the big engines. Right. Let me do this. Let's save this as our, huh, let's just do stack mount space plane, because this counts, right? <laughs> save there it. There we go. And I'm actually going to bring this over to the VAB so we can put it. So Perfect. a lot like the shuttle does, we get it ready in its own hangar. Mm -hmm. Then we did it. And if you've seen that video on YouTube where the big crane with the orange pieces yellow pieces that they actually used here, right? When they moved it onto the deck of the carrier, they flip the shuttle up like that and then rotate it so it can get through the doors. Yep. And then that's From an the amazing video. From the orbital processing facility to the vehicle assembly building and then on the giant crawler out to the pad. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's basically just a tow truck that brings it from the hangar. The big tow truck. 
Um, so let's see here. I'm going to move it over to the VAB, and we can load. This is a new thing we have as well. We can build something in the space plane hangar and then load it directly right into the VAB. That's perfect. I can just go like this and say, hey, look at the space plane hangar craft and grab the not cool looking little craft. EJ <laughs> was here. Yeah. I, I see like half a shuttle named EJ was here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he may or may not have been <laughs> building something after the stream yesterday. Oh, so. man. Oh, so spoiler we, so alert for later. One of the things yeah. we did yesterday, yeah, 16. some of the viewers built a craft based on the exhibits here at the museum. Very cool. So we have just about every plane you have on exhibit at the museum in Kerbal Space Program awesome. now. And you can download them. Different people can play with them. That's I may try stuff. that when I get home. It's really cool. Let's see here. Glider What did I name that plane? I just called it something. Stack Mount Space Plane. There That's you go. Yep. Right there. And we'll bring it up in here. And I don't have a crane to do this, but I can just grab it and it'll go into the correct Perfect. orientation. Like now, that. what's the mass on that? Uh, the 14, mass is 14, kilograms? exactly, which yeah, is Yeah, wow. Reading just right up at the top there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if not, it's also bottom left there. That's yeah, true. we'll get it down there. Yeah. So we could do something like this. We're going to have to have some sort of stack decoupler set up. Uh, and we're going to have to probably put some struts in as well, because yeah. the end of this is so... It almost makes sense maybe to have a flat end instead of an aerodynamic end, but... Ah, yep. Kerbal Space Program. You can just say it out loud, EJ. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I can't up? read that. Mm. 1,600 people. That's yeah, I can't lot. read that, What's but that's up, awesome. People? Yeah, Thank how's it everyone. going? Thank you for watching. We are totally building stuff with, wait, not with, from the deck of the USS Intrepid. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space, Space Museum in New York City as mm -hmm. part of the Space and Science Festival. If you're just joining us, this isn't a green screen. It's an actual space shuttle behind us, and we're sitting on the deck of an actual aircraft yep, carrier. That's the Space Shuttle Enterprise here in the Space Shuttle Pavilion. Yes. Exactly. If you're in New York, you should come. If you're anywhere, uh, you should come, actually. If you Just ever like, come to New York, you do have you to have come to see, see this. this. So many people, like, like people have told me, like, oh, I came to New York, um, and I didn't know this was here. And I was like, what do you mean you didn't know? Oh, you're like, oh. all the time. Happens all the time. We get people who <sighs> jogging up uh, 12th Avenue. Yeah? Right, uh, right at the park. And in, they're uh, like, Hudson River Park. And they're, that's, that's an aircraft carrier. <laughs> that is that? an aircraft <laughs> carrier. <laughs> Um, let's keep going. I mean, people need to know about it. That's one of the reasons we wanted to do this stream here, because it's awesome. Um, we totally appreciate you guys letting us do it oh, from yeah. here. And hopefully some people learn that there's awesome stuff in New York City that's not, you know, the Statue of Liberty or the... Uh, Empire State Building. Empire State Building, yeah. you know, Times, Times Square. Square. <laughs> this is like walking distance to Times Square. Yeah, it is. Very so, much so we've been walking over there from lunch. Yeah, um, exactly. We got a sandwich there way? the other day. Yeah. We did get a sandwich there. It's like so close. If you come to New York, you can't miss the museum. Uh, exactly. And it's not dark. We are in Inside a climate controlled yes, building. It's air conditioned, so, is the yeah. I would not I don't know if I'd be streaming if we were sitting outside. No. <laughs> no, I would probably that was one of the stipulations NASA made when Enterprise came here. It had to be in a climate <laughs> It had to be in a climate yeah. building. So if you ever need air conditioning, yes. you always come right up here. Yeah. You just come over here. How should we do this? I mean we could totally do orange tanks on here. I would recommend giving this as much mass as possible to offset the weight at the top. I oh, I can ah. do that too. Um I could totally do that. Look at this. I can put huge things down here. Where yeah. is this thing? That's perfect. There we go. And then one of those big massive huge launches. tanks. Oh like wow. That. Go for the and I'm very concerned here. I'm very concerned about how KSP Arrow is going to deal with this. I think KSP Arrow may <laughs> not be our friends here. Um two stage? What do you think? One big stage on the One bottom and then this goes the rest of the way? One big stage might work if we have a smaller stage at the top. Okay, or maybe boosters underneath, control. so we've got some, some yeah. boosters that drop yeah. away and then the central core. And then comes the um, question of liquid versus solid, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was actually a big thing, the liquid versus solid. Um, the solid rockets are kind of like a more jarring, like crazy ride, and the liquid engines are a little bit more smoother sort of ride, and mm -hmm. you can cut them off if you need to, and there's all sorts of like benefits for the liquid engines yeah. versus the SRBs. Very much so. Uh, we're sitting on 4,000 Delta V in just this stage. Perfect. Which is more than enough to get us to orbit. <laughs> Without using anything from this, this is actually nuts. Is, is this accurate? That's non-atmospheric, which is fine. Uh, 1.87 on the pad, 1.4 in atmosphere, that's fine. Not bad. And it's 4,000 Delta V. This is, like, way too much. Yeah, that seems... Huh. Should we try it just as it is, not trying to maneuver, just go straight up as far as we can? Yeah, I mean, this will this will actually probably leave the Kerbin system just on this stage. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it'll like, go wherever. <laughs> like, we can um, send it out towards the, you know, towards the sun or Kerbal. And, and I'm certainly well, going to strut Galactica this in. Just yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any FTL stuff with this. And plus, Vipers with apparently whatever their engines are, they get some crazy uh, specific impulse. Oh, definitely. Because the mass of the Viper is tiny and they go forever. Anyways, moving right along. The importance uh, of struts. Very important in space We're definitely going to... So many struts. As so we've learned much. within the last few weeks, struts are very important Struts are very important. Struts are very important. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so let's keep going. Does everybody gets that, right? CRS-7, right, Struts? Yeah. We heard the news about why uh, the SpaceX launch, the helium tank, tried to get up close and personal with the oxygen tank, was it? Uh, I don't remember if it was hit, but it came loose because yeah, of yeah, a yeah. strut failure, in short. There's no way this is going to work, but let's launch it anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> because launch Save it, launch it, and let's go learn some things. So in KSP uh, 1.0, with the changes in aero, um, there's actually less of a supersphere. Right? We get a little bit less drag when we're down lower in the atmosphere, so it takes a lot less delta V to get to orbit. It used to be 4,500, we would say, to get to orbit. Now we're making it on like 3,500, 3,400, um, a lot less. So this, when I saw that this was 4,000 delta V, um, I was only looking for 3,500 between this stage and the that space stage. plane. Mm -hmm. So we've got more than we need right now. We could actually build it smaller. I was worried that was going to tip over because of the weight at the top, but it's oh, still standing there pretty nah, nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Carmel Space Program, you know? Yeah. Just what? How ignore, did that blow up? Because they ignore the destroyed part of the uh, bed. Yeah. When did that, that blow up? <laughs> I don't know when that blew up. Uh, yeah, about Yesterday, that. Yesterday, was, was <laughs> no, EJ launching <laughs> stuff again? <laughs> All right. Let's get a couple <laughs> viewers. Let's get rid of the uh, these two guys. Oh, EJ. Let's get this out like that and like that. Let's go with the crew roster and grab Goose Lena. Gasse Lena. I don't know how to. Pr I'm so terrible. Hey. If I pr mispronounce your name, I apologize. So, this is a mod for Kerbal Space Room that mm -hmm. integrates with the Twitch chat and pulls names out of the Twitch chat room and creates Kerbals with their names on them. Awesome. So, yeah. we always kill. I mean, and we like always. There's 1,500 people watching right now, so there's oh, a large That's exactly chance right. To so we've got, oh man, I can't read it. It's like too Osisk. far away. Osisk. There we go. We've got two names. Oh, close enough. Good enough for and work, right? All right. You know, there we go. That's close enough. Let's see if this thing launches. And I'm totally concerned about the aerodynamics and, and the lift or something generated by these, like trying to pull us over. Mm, I don't we know. We have the control surfaces. We should be able to push it over. I don't know if it will ha be as effective as we need. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be words. very strong, considering how <laughs> you know, that stage there. But. Well, let's see what we've got. We've got panel locked. We've got, uh, wait, no, throttle up, panel locked. SAS is engaged. Let's get this rid of the alarm clock. Some of the other shuttle designs had the wings and extra control surfaces on the launcher as well, Oh, right? they did. Maybe that's the way we have to fix this. Well, we'll try it. doesn't work, yeah. Yeah, because they had, like, ta you know, they had tail stabilizers and wings. And that's a solid launch it's, it's so far. It's a little far. bit of a slow takeoff so we, we usually try four. to shoot for like 1.5 mm -hmm. on the pad um if we break the sound barrier too low down where the atmosphere is too thick we actually get what's called normal shock we get a big bump in drag all of a sudden which can make the craft start to behave Until differently you get well beyond it yeah. so uh, i could probably also rotate because if we're going to pitch over to the uh oh there it no, is. Nope, there it is flip program complete the flip <laughs> program is totally complete i just touched it and this is not the way to space as it turned out Wait, can we fix it? Can we fly this way instead? Save it. So you can see all the lift being generated by, yeah, so, well, we had extra there delta V anyways. There Come on, turn go. back around. There we go. That was like a very classy flip program. Very, like it was yes. <laughs> that was like a 360 no flip, well, no, it definitely had flips, I don't know. 360 Whatever no it was, it was in my fakey, fakey, There you go, yeah. thank you, Nazamin. Launch. So yeah. you can see there's actually some lift being generated by some parts in there. Those are the wings, and the control surfaces are acting to counteract it because of the SAS right now. Perfect. And if I turn this over too much, it gets into some sort of situation where it can't be counteracted. And there's the aerodynamic forces. Uh -huh. You can see the drag from we the different pieces. 7.5. Yep, we're going Mach 1.5, so we're going a little fast on that as well. Yeah, those Mach effects, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to start to pitch over, but I think I'm going to try. Yeah, um, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, wow! That could possibly go wrong. Flip program complete. So yeah, you can see, go. this is like <laughs> kind of hard. And I don't know. I wonder if it's just because of the way KSP does it. Edit. Can I save it? Nope, not that way. We could try adding the control surfaces kind of like the old shuttle designs. Is this a problem in real life for it to flip like this? Would the wings maybe designed in a specific way? There we go. See, I'm fine. I meant to do that. Yeah, a little um, bit more vibration. We're definitely, we definitely definitely yeah. have a little bit of wobble there. Um, would we design different wings on this so that it didn't get lift? Or like maybe like a very low camber sort of I wing? Mean, uh, the wings on our shuttle here, they're, they're massive airfoils. Right. They're, they're comparable in some cases to something you might see on a plane in the 30s. A little okay. bit more advanced, I guess we could say. But still, they're pretty big. I don't know if there is something you can do to the airfoil itself to minimize that sort of reaction. Right. You may have to counteract it with control surfaces. There we go. 40,000. <laughs> Look at that heating. It's actually looking really well. Like, we're going to still get into a nice, even equatorial orbit. 
there's 73. <laughs> there's an F of 74, 75 already. 75. See, we're fine. Wow. We're yeah. fine. That was a completely nominal launch. It was meant to happen that way. Um, <coughs> so we still have 783 delta V left in here. It's going to take us slightly less than that to circularize the orbit. Um, maybe it was a bit of a wild ride for the brave Kerbinauts on board here, <laughs> but uh, let's put a maneuver node there, add the maneuver, go ahead and put some more kinetic energy to miss the planet. Wait for the flip. That's probably fine. Can I see it? There it is. The APO is 84. It's not high, there. but we don't need high. We just yeah, need Yeah, just out of the atmosphere. There we go. The test sort of thing. And we're flying along. It's going to be a 14-second burn, costing us 435 delta V. We've got 783 in the tank. Great success. Like on the <laughs> first launch. Not bad. That's not bad at all. Just like SCS-1, uh, yeah. though. Same <laughs> thing. It's the first shuttle mission. It was a test launch it with people on board, with two people Good actually. Good to go. So there you two go. people on board? Yeah. I didn't know that. John Young, John Young and Bob, Bob Crippen. Crippen. Did it go like orbital? Yes. They stayed there for two days and then came back down in uh, I California. I didn't know that. It's a nice yeah. picture of them actually uh, sleeping, one right side up, the other upside down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. And uh, fun fact, John Young, who was the uh, commander of that, was recovered back on one of his uh, Gemini missions by the Intrepid. 1965, yeah. There you go. So, I mean... Our plane has worked, and I guess the challenge was the, the aerodynamic and all the drag that we have at the top of the rocket versus not having a lot of drag at the bottom of the rocket. Um, there's probably some things we could do to fix that. There, I overcooked it a little bit, but look, we still have 329 basically orbital maneuvering delta V left. Um, we're good to go with this design. I wonder, should we spend some more time or should we go over the special? What, what time do we have you till? I'm here for just a couple more minutes before I have to get before ready to do Before you have to, to get back. Um, so maybe we should try to get this going and then we'll start on the space shuttle, but you're going to have to take off, I guess. I will. I might okay. be able to check back in a little later in the day good for deal. a few Great. minutes we'll here or there, but All right. yeah, good we'll deal, be man. here. Excellent. We'll be here till 12.30. Uh, and then we take an yep. hour break and we'll be back at 1.30. At 1.30. Right. I'm here till 6 today, so. Good deal. All right. Man. All right. Awesome. Good deal. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the problem that we may have to solve here is, is reverting the flight and putting something to create the drag to move the center of pressure back right on the rocket mm -hmm. as opposed to that we could put i don't know shuttle fins this would probably work right is that a horn uh that could be the cruise ship next door the there cruise is ship a is cruise leaving. ship it oh. might be circle line out that way okay they always beep when they're uh, about to pull out yeah that sounded more like it was coming from that side which there is i think two <laughs> cruise ships right now because keep in mind we're on a pier on the hudson river so there's two more piers next door all with yep. like giant Norwegian big cruise, cruise ship cruise terminal 88a Interesting thing, Pier 86 here used to be a cruise ship terminal as well. Okay. In World War II, a cruise ship accidentally rolled over in here. Uh, they didn't have the manpower to fix it, to pull it out for a couple of years. Really? Yeah. And it just sat there? Just sat there for a while. Really? Uh, that makes me feel comfortable on the pier of a crashed World War, a previous World War II <laughs> ship here. Great. <laughs> that was an ocean liner. Uh, of course, there are all sorts of piers up and down the coast here. Right, and right. in New Jersey, you can still see the rotting uh, wooden pilings from old piers back there. Yeah, There's and along the West Side Highway, region. too, you can see them, yeah. It's so amazing. I'm just playing around with this. Um, <laughs> I know that you're... Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, I don't know, let's, yes. let's do this sort of deal. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you're limited for time. I know that you've got to take off. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else we want to talk about before we have to go? We talked about some of the awesome exhibits that there at, mm -hmm. at the museum. Um, are there any special programs? We talked about the tours you can take. We did talk about tours. We talked a little bit about programs. I know going all throughout today, we're going to have some more presentations right, that are going to be right. up there on the Education Zone stage. Okay, excellent. Uh, one about the Hubble Space Telescope. I believe those cool. are happening at 12 and 3 today. I think that's why we're going on live. <laughs> on live uh. um, because they've got a stage behind us they are going to be doing some stuff mm -hmm. with the Hubble and the Hubble 25 exhibit which we yes. didn't even say mm -hmm. is right behind us over here so there's a bunch of artifacts from the Hubble yeah, we've got tools Mike Massimino used himself yep, to repair yep. the Hubble Space Telescope right in there uh, we've got a whole bunch of other programs our education department runs as well not everybody learns the same way and yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Kerbal demonstrates that very well it really does so we've so got people never learn at all and they just keep crashing <laughs> uh, so we have pro programs for people with disabilities we have programs for, uh, uh, for young kids ki uh, there's like a summer adults. camp sort of thing even that, that we goes have on, camp right? intrepid as well yeah yeah I'd like to go to summer camp on an air it's where was this when I was a kid like <laughs> it's fun I'll tell you that uh, excellent um, I think we're good to go. 
Okay. Do you want to, uh, anything else? Any farting words? At the mm. moment, I don't have anything on me, but I wish you best of luck. I may Thank check you. in Thank with you, you a little later in the day. Excellent. It looks thing. like you've built something solid here. <laughs> yeah. Knows, maybe by the end of the day tomorrow, it'll be scaled up and a little bit better. Maybe. Well, we're going to go for the actual shuttle. I think we're going to try and get the real shuttle in there so with mass tomorrow we can uh, get some Hubble missions going and talk about that. That'll be our focus tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. But thank you for yeah, that. Thank time. you guys so much. Totally. Thank you. Mike, appreciate you stopping by. Thank you for letting us do this. You're welcome. This is a lot of fun for me, too. Good deal. Yes. Don't forget to unplug before you stand up. You we did that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Outstanding. Thank you again, thank man. You. Thank you, guys. So guys, um, let me go over here right quick. And I see I need to be a better producer. I should have went full screen when we were doing that. And I this is why we need.